Ever wondered how you can use AI with your data in Dynamics 365 apps or Power Apps model driven apps? Well, stay tuned because we have Paul back on the show. He's going to show us a tool that they've recently developed at Magnetism. Let's get the show started. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Low Code Revolution show. I'm Eliza. I'm a senior cloud advocate here at Microsoft. And today we have Paul Mueller from Magnetism in New Zealand, who joins us back on the show. Today, he's going to show a tool that they've recently developed that utilizes AI and can work alongside your data in Dynamics 365 apps and Para apps, model driven apps. Welcome back to the show, Paul. Hey, thanks for having me back on. Uh, yeah, so today we're going to be looking at our newest tool, uh, our AI agents for Power Apps. Uh, so basically, this is a AI tool that we've developed on top of Dynamics 365 and Power Apps. And unlike most AI assistants, which are often limited in the scope that they have access to and what they can do, uh, we've designed this to basically give users the ability to create their own uh, AI actions. Um, and that they're reusable and can be triggered from forms and views and um, basically anywhere in the system or even uh, automatically from Power Automate. Uh, and the difference is, yeah, you can you can basically set these up and provide the context that you want the AI to have access to. So unlike a, uh, some other AI assistants where it has a limited set of data that it can access, this uh, allows you to basically configure what context it has access to. Uh, and that's all available to users. You don't have to be like a prompt engineer or a developer to configure these. So it's really accessible for general users. Um, so before I get into the config of how to set these up, I'll just show a couple of examples, which will hopefully give a little bit of context on um, how those work. So I've pre-configured some um, AI agents, and I'll show you how these work on the accounts. So these can be triggered on demand, either from a view or from a form. Uh, they can also be run automatically on load of a record or, like I said, from Power Automate. So that gives you a few more options of how to configure them. Um, so if you select a record, you'll see we've got this AI Agents menu. Uh, and these options are all um, pulling dynamically from that AI Agents table configuration. And this is also dynamic based on the context. So because I'm on a view and I've selected one record, these are the options that I can see. Uh, and you can also select multiple records, and then you'll get a slightly different view depending on how those are configured. Uh, and also, if we open up one of those accounts, uh, we also have this AI agents on the account form. And again, the context is slightly different depending on what actions are enabled for this um, area. Uh, so the first one that I'll show is a one that we've configured to show the sentiment of an account. Uh, so basically how it's configured is it'll have a look at all the recent activities, all the recent notes, and any interactions with that account. Uh, and it's filtered to the last 30 days. And then it will determine if the sentiment is negative. And if it is, then it will pop up and uh, give the user a summary of why it's negative and what they can do to resolve it. So in this case, the sentiment is not negative, so we don't see any pop-up. And if we go back to our accounts view and open up a different account, that sentiment analysis will run automatically in the background. Uh, and once that determines whether it's negative, you can see it pops up with a little summary on the right, uh, which describes why it's negative. So there was an invoice amount that they're unhappy with, and it gives a recommendation on how to improve that. So that's an example of one that runs automatically. Uh, and we can also, we've also set one up to run on demand. Um, and this one will run a similar query um, to get the similar context of activities and notes and things within the last 30 days. Uh, and this will just provide it as a pop-up um, and give us that sentiment. So whether it's negative or positive, this one will just give you the, the sentiment with a bit of ex explanation. Uh, another example of things that we can do with the agents is updating fields. Uh, so we've got one example where it will format a phone number. So you can see we've got a phone number here for the account, um, but it doesn't provide any area code or um, country code prefix. So without um, 
knowing all of the context of the account, it would be difficult to know uh, what those things should be. But we've configured our AI action to um, take the context of the account and using the city and the country, it will format the uh, phone number with those country and city prefixes. And so that's just pulling from these city and country fields. Uh, and a couple of other things we can do with the AI agents is uh, create visualizations. So we can create custom charts and kind of like a little, little dashboard. Um, and just a couple of examples we've got is I'll just show you a really simple one, which is showing open activities by contact. So what this is going to do is um, for all of the contacts within that account, it's going to just count up how many open activities there are. So obviously that's something that you could build with um, the chart tools in Dynamics. Uh, this is just a way of giving the users a quick way of doing that. You don't have to go in and customize anything. You don't have to know how to build charts. You can just do this with a very, very simple prompt. And you can do some more complex things with the charting tools as well. Because it's an AI, it can analyze the data and kind of group things together a bit more than uh, you could just with out of the box tools. So we can do like an activities by theme. Uh, and that will have a look at the subjects, the descriptions, and figure out if there's any common themes across those activities. So you can see we've got some with invoice issues, we've got some follow-ups, and some general um, activities. So that's just a way of kind of taking different contexts from those activities and uh, using AI to understand how to categorize those and then represent it in a nice little chart. Cool, so uh, I'll jump into the config now and you can actually see how some of those are set up. So if we just take that last example we looked at. So at a basic level, we can set up the table that it shows on. So in these, this case, they're all showing on the account table uh, and then we've got the display area. So this is where you can say show it on the form, show it on the view or show it um, on the view with multiple records selected or if you wanna run it on load. And then you can set things like the display name in the in the drop down, um, or provide a grouping. If you've got lots of different actions, you can group them by different categories, and you can also provide a custom icon to like a web resource if you want to um, set something different. And then yeah, you can see here this is the prompt that uh, you can type in. So in this case, it's a very very simple prompt. You're just saying create a stacked bar chart, um, and yeah, it basically takes that and generates the content from it. And then if we scroll down, you've got the type of response. So this is where we can say, I want it to generate a chart and I want it to output to the side pane. Uh, so we can also say output to like a dialogue or output to a column. So this is where we can kind of configure how those um, agents should um, produce the output. So this kind of takes away a lot of the um, the prompt requirements. So that's why we can keep the prompt very simple. And using this extra context, you can uh, tell the AI exactly what the format of the response should look like. And then to build the actual context of what data the AI can access, we've got this schema builder. And this is where you can build a query, which is similar to advanced find, where you can select all the columns and relationships. Uh, so starting from the account, which is how we're triggering the agent, we can select fields or relationships. And in this case, this one grabs uh, activities from the related contacts. So we can drill down into contacts. Uh, and in this case, we're getting the field, uh, the full name from the contacts. And then if we come down, we're also getting the activities from those contacts. We're um, including a filter to say get activities that are active. And it's doing an aggregate to just count those. And then um, that response will then be used by the AI to create that chart. Uh, from here, we can also do some previews. So we can click on preview. And so while you're building this, you can um, run this and make sure that you're getting the right response. And then you can tweak your prompts and make sure that it is um, doing exactly what you expect it to do. And you can also preview the payload as well, which um, will basically show you uh, what gets provided to the AI. So in this case, it's just showing us the JSON schema. Um, so you can see all of those different fields that are getting provided to the AI. So if you need to reference things specifically by the field name, for example, you can uh, make reference to that in your prompt as well.
Cool. Um, we can also add parameters into our prompt. So uh, for example, if we wanted to do something like filter by a specific date. So um, at the moment, this is just getting all active activities for those contacts. If we wanted to say get activities since a specific date, we could add um, some extra prompt in here, say activity only get activities since, and then you can add a parameter um, and you could say since date and set the type as a date, make that required. And then that will insert a dynamic parameter into the query. Um, so once we, if we run this again, you'll see you now get a prompt to select the date and that will add that date into the, um, the prompt when it runs. So the AI will know to filter that by those dates. Cool, and one last example I wanna show is just doing some more complex stuff with Power Automate. So I'll jump into this agent that we've set up. And this is basically doing that sentiment analysis again, but it's running on an email this time. So the idea is when an email comes in, we wanna do a sentiment analysis. And if there's a negative sentiment, then we want to trigger off some other action. So we've set the prompt to tell the AI to uh, run that sentiment analysis. And if it's a negative sentiment, then provide the reason why it's negative and a recommendation for someone to um, do something with that. And we've set the response format to be a JSON object. And you can also provide an example of what the AI should um, format the response like. And then um, we can trigger that from something like Power Automate and parse that response to do something with it. Uh, and if we just quickly check the schema builder again, you'll see in this case, it's running on email and we're providing the description, the sender details, the subject, um, and then we're also including attachments so we can read if they've attached any files. Um, the AI can have the context of those attachments and do the sentiment analysis on those as well. Uh, so I've got a couple of examples of where I've run emails. Um, so this first one is, so basically this Power Automate flow is running on creative an email. And then it triggers our action to get the response from the AI. So it's passing through the, the action ID and then the record for the email that we're running it on. And then you'll see it's providing the output um, with that JSON object. So that's directly from the AI. It's saying the sentiment is not negative. Um, so then once we parse that result, it doesn't do anything. So there's no task created. Um, otherwise, we've got this other example where the sentiment is uh, a bit more negative. So we get a negative result from the AI and then we can do conditions on that. So because it's negative, we can then create a task for someone to follow up and it can include those reasonings and the recommendations. So obviously a lot you can do with um, Power Automate. So yeah, if you've got those examples, um, yeah, then you can basically configure exactly what that format should be. Yeah, I really like what you showed in terms of the schema builder. And I really think that that preview feature is pretty neat and that you can also view that JSON payload. I think that's going to be really, really handy. So one question I do have, Paul, today is for the setup that a team would do in terms of exploring the Infinity Agents AI tool in a developer environment, let's say they're ready to take it on board to another target environment, let's say UAT and then eventually live. So how would they go in, in moving it from the source environment to target environments? Could you tell us more about that? Yep. Yeah. So all of this is basically using just records in Dynamics. So very easy to export it to Excel or use something like XRM Toolbox to data transport. It's all in that AI agent uh, table. So all of the config and the schema and everything is saved in fields within that table. So very easy to just um, transport the records across from one environment to the other. Cool, that sounds awesome. Well, if you liked what you saw today, check out the description down below as we'll have links to the tool that Magnetism built. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now.